So I was finally able to watch The Terminal List on Amazon Prime. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Share your thoughts on The Terminal List. This is a spoiler-free review, so if you want to talk specifics and spoilers, just put up a spoiler warning first in the comments section. And let's get started talking about the good. And the best way to describe The Terminal List is if Tom Clancy, The Punisher, The Fugitive, and First Blood had a child, which is a strange way of putting it, because that would be four parents, one of which is a human, one of which is a made-up character, and two of, that's three fingers, two of which are IPs as the parents for this thing, but that's the best way to describe it. It's those four things mashed together, and if that description makes you go, that doesn't sound very good, you won't like The Terminalist. If you're like me and you hear that and you go, that sounds like the best TV show ever, you probably enjoy this series, and as someone that enjoys Tom Clancy adaptations, The Punisher, The Fugitive, as well as First Blood. This gun had all the things that I enjoyed. Stars Chris Pratt, uh, Taylor Kitsch, Constance Wu, and um, I'm a big Chris Pratt fan. And in this, he's not doing the usual Chris Pratt shtick. He's not funny Chris Pratt. He's not goofy Chris Pratt. He is Navy SEAL Chris Pratt and just gives an actual performance. Then you have Taylor Kitsch in there who was on Friday Night Lights and then they tried to make him an A-lister about 10 years ago and kind of put him in a bunch of blockbusters, but he got the wrong ones. And so then his blockbuster clear career never really took off, but that doesn't change the fact that he's still a lot of fun to see on screen. So... I never would have thought, you know who would be real fun to see paired up on screen for a TV series? Chris Pratt and Taylor Kitsch. And now that I've seen it, went, that's a, that's a nice little pairing right there. That worked. They both have a very normal guy vibe that they can bring to it. That just have a very strong chemistry between the two of them and in action sequences when they're shooting people in the face. That's also quite a bit of fun to see. But essentially, it, it takes the premise that was maybe overdone back in the 90s of the revenge movie where the guy's been wronged and people close to him have been killed and he uses his set of skills to get revenge, combines it with kind of the political thrillers, the, the, a lot of the Tom Clancy novels, and then kind of the chasing after this person that's involved in this from The Fugitive. It kind of mashes them all together in a, in a way that feels familiar, but also is refreshing to have currently because you just don't get a lot of movies like that anymore and this is a tv show version of it with the production values of a movie with a movie star in the lead even some of the episodes were directed by Antoine Fuqua who normally directs mid-tier budget action thrillers he's one of the few guys still doing that and then they got him to be one of the people to direct episodes of this show and you feel that. It's a high production value television show that's a throwback to revenge thrillers of the 90s, a genre film that I absolutely love, and I miss seeing more of them on the big screen. And if this is what we're going to get instead, I'm actually very okay with that. Now, it starts off and has a bit of a twist on the genre because it, it, it blends in the lead character having some memory issues, and I don't want to go into too many specifics, but there's some stuff going on with his mental state, and so as he's trying to recall exactly what happened that led to the inciting incidents of this the show, he has, his memory isn't quite right, and so it adds in a little bit more kind of intrigue and something a little bit different to it, and that continues all throughout the series. I think I connected with it a little bit more when that backed down a little bit, and it went a bit more straightforward, because it was easier to just kind of follow the energy of it when things started going. But it just does a great job of creating this scenario where you really care about this lead character, what happened to him, raises a bunch of questions. You're like, what's going on with him? What went down with that mission? Who did this thing? Can we trust this? What about this reporter? What, how does she tie into all of this? Is, is she actually for the good or is she just out to like exploit things? Where's she coming into this? So it kind of creates this very vast conspiracy. And then if you're someone that likes revenge movies, you get that terminal list that's the title list of it. And six 
mm, yeah, six of the eight episodes just are about him crossing names off the list and kind of getting to these different people. And so you get that, the satisfaction of the revenge element of the payoff of it in a bunch of these different episodes as you go through it, as you learn more information, as you realize there's more people that need to be added to the list, you just kind of keep getting them. When it, man, I put my mind right in front of me and I keep punching it. Um, and all throughout the show, you get um, these action sequences and they... Because the book was written by an actual Navy SEAL, it tries to be much more grounded. Like, of course, it's fantastical. Of course, these guys are way too competent what they're doing. And all, you have all the stuff that normally happens in action movies and things like this. But it's also done in a way that feels like there's actual tactics involved. It's thought through of, like, how do the experts do this stuff? What do they use? And plays it out not just like The Punisher, where it's just over-the-top ridiculous stuff feels like actual people with a plan, a strategy to try and overcome specific things in light of having a plan, all that stuff. So it just feels a little bit more more grounded for that reason. And um, like as you go through it, as you get answers, you you get a new target. Like I, I assumed one person was going to be the guy that was going to be all the way until the end, and he's not. And you keep thinking this is where it kind of ends, and it keeps going further and further and further. And I was like, oh, okay, you're actually winning me over. All of this stuff kind of works. And so I am absolutely the target audience for a show like this. It's not doing great on Rotten Tomatoes. It's like a 40% on Rotten Tomatoes. The audience scores like a 95%. And a bunch of the negative reviews are like, this is a total dad show. This is a show that dads watch. This is a show that your uncle will watch. And I'm reading all that like, okay, yeah, I've been a dad for 10 years. Been an uncle for 17 years, almost 18 years now. Yeah, okay, I guess I fit neatly into that category, and yeah, this is right up my alley. And what seemed to be a criticism for them was like, cool, we're getting another one of these, except it's a TV show, and, you know, we'll get into the negatives and some maybe some consequences of it being a TV show versus a movie, but uh, it's eight episodes long. Each episode is an hour long, and I binged it in two nights, and just because we couldn't stop watching, and I was staying up to like two, three in the morning to get it watched because we watched it. Of course, after the kids went to bed. And I am not someone that normally is able to stay up that late because uh, I have kids and they're going to wake me up early in the morning anyway. So, like, it was like, oh, man, I just, just got to keep watching. We got to finish it, right? We got to finish it tonight. It's that sort of show where you just get invested. You care about where things are happening. You want to know who's a traitor. And you want to see how he's going to get his revenge and how this all plays out. So um, I got sucked in, binged it in two days, thoroughly enjoyed it. I am the target audience. Uh, I saw the trailer and went, that seems like that's going to be my kind of show. And then, once again, if you hear the synopsis that this is like if you took First Blood, The Fugitive, and The Punisher, put them in a blender, mixed them up, and then had Tom Clancy adapt it, and you go, perfect, that sounds amazing, you're going to love this show. If you hear that and you go, another one of those, it's probably not going to win you over. It, it knows its audience. It knows the type of people that watch this sort of thing, and it delivers the movie that they want. And that's also why, like, I imagine there's a pretty big gap between critics and audience on this one of, like, it's it's designed for a very specific audience, people like me, and I'm eating it up, and then people that that's just, they're tired of this thing. Well, that's a product of the 90s. They're not going for it all. There's some issues here, so let's move on to the bad. And the big thing here is that, that it is familiar. It does feel like the type of book that was traditionally adapted into a two, two and a half hour long movie that's just been adapted into a eight hour runtime. And in which case, some of it feels familiar. Hence why there's very clear inspirations from other things. Uh, I would guess that the, the author's not terribly far off in age from me. He grew up watching the same movies I grew up watching, and then he went off and actually became one of the heroes of the movies that he loved, the stories that he loved, and then adapted it. And so it, it he, ha he can pull in real-life experience that gives a, a verisimilitude to it. It can ground it in reality while telling a story that's very much the sort of thing that I would write, the sort of thing I would be excited to, sort of, I don't know that I could write something this complex, but it's the sort of thing that I would mash together and want to tell a story out of because I grew up watching these same sorts of stories, reading these same sorts of books. That's kind of what this felt like, but also meant that there's certain things about it that feel familiar. And you start trying to guess who's going to be a traitor and you're you're probably going to be pretty close of what some of the final reveals will be. It's not, 
you don't get to the end and go, well, that was so clever. You go, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. I could, that's, that's how these things normally work. These are the sorts of twists and turns you can expect in these stories. And there you are. You can expect the, the sorts of character arcs. The, the, the lead character isn't really the one that grows and changes all that much. He has traumatic events happen in the first episode. Then he's on the, the revenge mission for the rest of it. So it's more the kind of the side characters that grow, change, have a their perspective on the world and power systems and things like that. They're the ones that more shift, those supporting characters, more so than our lead character. And you can you can kind of guess pretty early on what that's gonna look like. You can guess which people are probably are gonna be on the bad side. So it look familiar, a little bit predictable. And then kind of tied into this too is that you go, you know, did it need to be eight hours long? We binged it in two days. I wasn't thinking like, man, this this is the filler episode. But there's also a sense in which when you have you know, six episodes out of eight are him crossing someone off the list, you could also see where, okay, wait, you could have just taken a couple of these episodes out. You could have. Um, I didn't necessarily mind it. This is a very minor sort of thought of like, but some people be like, okay, another episode we're crossing someone off the list and then to reveal that the hole goes deeper and there's someone else and who, here's who we need to get next. You can feel that a little bit of like you think you're building towards this thing and then to we're still going, we're still going, we're still going. Um, that really didn't bother me too much. I felt it by the time it played out, it was earned and made sense and it changed up the formula enough of who we're going after. That It's not the same way that he goes after them and they're not the same type of person. So it feels different. It has variety enough. But I think there's certainly some valid validity to the idea that, you know, did it need to be eight episodes, eight hours long? Could it have been a little bit shorter? Perhaps. Uh, I was eating it up, so I, I didn't mind so much, but something worth mentioning for some people that might be less inclined to love the, the length and how much it we're going through crossing off the list and things like that. So that's my kind of feelings on it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I wasn't, the trailers didn't immediately, I think, sell it as well as the show itself sells it. And so as soon as I got into it, I was like, what's going on here? Okay, okay, okay. And I, and I heard some murmurs from people like comparing it to The Punisher and some of these other things. I was like, oh, I like that. What that sounds like even more than the, the trailers kind of sold me on it. And so I really wanted to check it out. I would have watched it sooner, but my wife was out of town and I wanted to watch it with her. So as soon as she got back to town, we just binged it in two days. That's actually one of the reasons we binged through it. So final recommendation, if you're a big fan of revenge movies, The Punisher, Tom Clancy works, The Fugitive, First Blood. And there's an episode in this that is straight up First Blood. Um, remixed for a new generation with a new story, but it is straight up first blood and it's awesome. Um, check this show out. It and it once again, it's not funny, Chris Pratt. It's not goofy, Chris Pratt. If you're tired of his shtick, that's not what this is. This is him showing you he's a real actor. This is him really going for it. And so, once again, if that's not your stuff, if you're not into revenge thrillers, if you're not into throwback action movies, things like that, you know, sit this one out. Otherwise, I, I I would I absolutely recommend it. I, I totally ate this show up. So thank you guys so much for watching. Share your thoughts down below in the comment section, and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye bye.